I started reading the first Rainbow Six book on a plane ride back home, notwithstanding the irony of said book opening with a hijacking attempt. The ambitions of this initial team are relatively modest compared to the current version of Rainbow, with American and European security guys collaborating on problems. It's an interesting book so far, and I'm curious to do a video on it in the future, but that's not the topic of this video. I've written a couple of blog videos like this in the past, and I've mentioned that I grew up on a lot of the old Jack Ryan flicks that might be before some of the Zoomers' times watching this, but for all of my Millennials and Gen Xers, anybody who grew up in this area of the country who had parents who worked for the federal government probably knew about Tom Clancy's espionage and daredevil action-adventure story. It was the book your dad brought with him on a trip to the beach. Your mom would remark on how this one's got Ben Affleck in it when this series swapped from Harrison Ford for the role of Jack Ryan. Now, I wasn't in my youth for the Cold War scares, and I didn't have to do the whole duck and cover thing, but I wonder if growing up in the shadow of 9-11 was my generation's equivalent of this sort of cultural anxiety. It was easier to sell these kinds of books, TV shows, and especially video games back then for reasons that you can say are good or bad. Fast forward to my college years and I hear about a new Jack Ryan show starting up again with the guy from The Office as the lead. Now personally, I thought this was a great casting choice. Chris Pine just, he, he was too Chad. He was good for a G.I. Joe reboot, not Jack Ryan. The whole point of Jack Ryan was that he was just a guy. He's this analyst guy. And then he had to be a secret agent. That was like, that was like the gimmick, right? He was kind of taken out of his comfort zone. And this isn't like a revolutionary trope. You know, the whole just a guy has to, has to get it done kind of thing. Th that's not groundbreaking. But when you do it right, it's really cool. And it makes for some really interesting character writing. Now, Krasinski's venture into this kind of lead role might have struck a lot of people at the time as odd. After all, what's the rest of the cast from The Office up to? Let's actually, let's not talk about that. He was in an action flick about a controversial topic going into the 2016 presidential election. Uh, I'll let you guys fill in the blank on this one. Anyway, I watched Jack Ryan. I really enjoyed it. Season two trailer comes out. I talk about it on Twitter. I'm like, hey, this looks dope. And then some people really didn't like that tweet, which is horrifying, I know. But some people, yeah, they really didn't like the tweet and they made it clear that I was <laughs> supporting CIA propaganda as opposed to the, you know, the State Department propaganda that I make a living off of, that I am followed for on Twitter, that I am subscribed to on YouTube for. And, you know, it's, it's understandable because gamers do not go outside. Uh, they do hide from the outside world. They don't like it when politics are brought up, regardless of the context. You know, they will start panicking uh, and screaming fits of fear and rage at the same time. Um, you know, and they're not aware that I'm making fun of them in this bit. They are writing an angry comment and they've downvoted it. Uh, you and I talking to each other right now, we're the only lucid people in this conversation. So <laughs> fucking stupid. But th the thing that I found so funny about this exchange, right? I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't like on copium about it, you know, like, oh, it's actually, it's about, um, you know, Venezuela is like really bad and America's so awesome. That wasn't the defense that I was getting at with it. My defense was more of, yeah, no shit. Like, it's a Tom Clancy show, man. Like, what do you think this is? Hunt for Red October, the book was first published by the Naval Institute Press, of which the building is on the grounds of the U.S. Naval Academy, which has no official or funding ties. Yeah, fucking it X to doubt. And it's funny because one of the events that I studied for my degree was uh, dropping pamphlets over Europe during the Second World War that were filled with, you know, just, just talking, talking smack, right? Like talking smack about the Nazis. Like, you guys want to know what the first issue of Captain America looked like? Here it is. You know, like, I, this is the first one. This was 1941. And, and I promise this has something to do with Rainbow Six Siege. Just vibe with me for a bit. It, well, let's, let's talk about that. So what is propaganda? Let's, let's look up the definition. So Webster's, a good old American dictionary. I'm going to use this one because uh, I'm an imperialist, obviously. It's defined as... The spreading of ideas, information, or rumor for the purpose of helping or injuring an institution, a cause, or a person. So let's talk about the morality of that, because that seems to be uh, the issue. Your favorite country, okay? I don't care which one, okay? We can get as demonetizable as possible in terms of the track record here, yeah, all right? Stuff we can't talk about on YouTube. Okay, we can have a squeaky clean record, like Iceland, okay? Iceland hasn't done anything bad, I think, yet. I got my eye on you, Iceland. You know, it's pretty weird that you call yourselves Iceland, but it's not an Iceland. It's, you know, it's more like a Greenland. And Greenland's made of ice. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sus. All of them. All of them. I don't care which one. All of them have made propaganda 
at some point for some reason. And, and I'm not and I'm not pulling an um actually here. Okay, I'm citing the dictionary. If citing the freaking dictionary is an um actually, then then we're truly truly fucked. What's a cause worth promoting, right? A lot of governments figured this out with war bonds, right? These were securities that you could use to finance the military, but you didn't have to gouge taxes. You know this meme? What was that? This is a Norman Rockwell painting. The government used these paintings for stamps, war bonds, all sorts of stuff, right? The government saw practical usage in this guy's ability as an illustrator. Now, when people say commissioned illustrations, you know, they think of this, which yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to find the same talent. Where do these text boxes keep coming? This is also commissioned art. This is commissioned art. This is commissioned art. I'm not joking. This is Chinese propaganda. I, I don't know why they made it look good, <laughs> right? This is all art meant to persuade someone. And so where I think people get hung up on the ethics of this sort of thing is, what is the purpose of the persuasion? And what are we trying to convey? What are we trying to get people to do? So what do I think Rainbow Six is trying to say? Well, I, you know, I think it's pretty obvious. I've made this talking point a lot. You know, the whole, you know, greater good, get everybody to get along, work together, blah, blah, blah. But it also goes a little bit deeper than that because the depth of how that's possible uh, is, is much more complicated. And so when I took a step back, when I was critiquing Rainbow Six's writing uh, initially around Void Edge especially, I was pretty critical of the whole Yana, okay, here's an astronaut going around, kicking doors and, and doing rootin' tootin' shootin'. I didn't realize that Yana's not meant to be doing field work like that. And when Oryx got added, this was kind of a common terminally online talking point. Uh, they're, they're adding, uh, they're adding like actual like insurgents to the game, bro. And, and it's like, dude, guys like Oryx exist, right? Like all these characters, like they're fictional characters, but there are people like them. You know, that's, that's called good writing. That's like believable characters. Crazy, right? If a bad guy is moving a bad thing through a bad place and this guy lives there, it's probably a good idea to be on, you know, at least speaking terms with him because he's going to help you find the bad guy. Maybe this guy has a vested interest in catching the bad guy too. Ah. And so when we're talking about really practical things that people in this line of work do in real life, it's important to at least get it in the ballpark. Now, I'm not talking War Thunder like leak classified military documents about the Challenger tank. But when you're in the boardroom and you're trying to come up with characters for a game that's vested in these very real topics, you want to get creative. You know, you can't add dude with gun number 5 million. And I, and I love guy with gun number 5 million. Battlefield 2042, right? Tacking to the hero shooter crap. This is not good execution, right? This is the Ron audience. This is the Ron game. This is a swing and a miss. This is totally different, right? This is an appropriate setting. What about the royal family member who wants to serve her country, but you know she kind of has to keep it under wraps for obvious reasons? Is that completely unrealistic? Is that complete fiction? I don't know. What about the literal like armed police force to protect wildlife in Africa from poachers? Mexico's got a rampant police corruption problem. What about the cops? You know, what about the security guys that are actually you know trying to do the right thing? What about those guys? Huh? Mexico Special Forces. It's so funny, right? Like people always think they have a gotcha on this stuff, right? You know the guy who's like, "Yeah, man, you know NASA's just like a cover up for the nuclear arms program, man. It's for the ICBMs, man." Um, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we learn a lot about physics by doing space stuff, and it just so happens that physics applies to things that go in the air really fast. Um, all things. I go in the air really fast, I, I man. You know, it's, it's like the robot dog argument. Oh, they can put a gun on it. They can put a gun on fucking anything. This, this stuff can help first responders. It, it can help ambulance workers. It can help firefighters, you know, find people trapped in a building. Like, like what? You know, even Ace, that's part of the reason that they added Ace, right? Because of that whole EMT kind of overlap, right? He's a paramedic. You need a guy like that on your team. Do I think it's perfect? No, but it gets the point across. And I think it's a good point. I think it's a really important and relevant point to make. And more so because I'm just gonna get personal for a bit here. So I made a video talking about the Russia connection with Rainbow Six, how we in the West, we were kind of under the impression we could you know, work with Russia to collaborate on certain security issues, even though now it seems completely far-fetched. And, and the fallout and the way that that whole situation played out is, is fucking tragic and sad. And the reason that it happened was because Russia got taken over by another fascist autocrat. And the way that we talk about bad guys, like who are the bad guys? What is a bad guy? 
we, we frame it in such emotionally charged terms anymore. And it's really a boy who cried wolf kind of situation because empathy, I think, also has ethical validation as well as pragmatic. There's a great line from The Social Dilemma, uh, the Netflix documentary, and it says, to make good predictions, you need to have a lot of data. And when I think of understanding history, when I think of understanding historical context, to me, that's just data. Other people's perspectives, that's data. And the reason that I bring it up is because in the events leading up to the Russian invasion, there were a number of political talking heads that I would listen to uh, just to pass the time or, or to understand perspectives of. And I didn't necessarily agree with them all the time, but I agreed with them enough of the time to think, okay, they're in the ballpark. But there was something about the recent invasion that just exposed a huge blind spot for a lot of these people, to me. Because all these people that I listened to completely just called it totally, totally, totally wrong. And they, and they weren't even close. And so many people were dead set like, Russia will not invade. It won't happen. It's impossible. And, and I'm sitting here and I'm reading these reports and it's all the facts on the ground that's available to the public. Like Russia is mobilizing a shit ton of fucking shit near the Ukrainian border. Um, okay. That's a little strange. Um, well, Greg, uh, Russia is being encroached on by a uh, NATO air base. I don't give an F-16 fighting Falcon fuck. Okay. That we put an air base in Poland. We're allies with Poland. I don't know how much Civ 5 you guys have played, but if you get too close to somebody's borders with a military unit, they get they get a little antsy. You know, for various reasons. I can't imagine why. And this was publicly available information. And all you have to do is is open a history textbook and go, oh yeah, it, this, this is possible. It, it happened. Like they literally did. They invaded Crimea and Eastern Ukraine. They invaded South Ossetia. They have a track record. And all these dumb talking heads are like, uh, it's, uh, it's saber rattling. It's, it's banging the war drums. Uh, Congress. Uh, we're not really giving Russia an out here. Yeah, we are giving them an out. Don't invade. Like, like what? Why do you think Ukraine wanted to join NATO? Why do you think that was a contentious topic? And so this got chalked up into the things that shouldn't be controversial, but are controversial column. Because the anti-mainstream sort of political talking sphere was so obsessed with being anti-mainstream that as soon as the mainstream said, yeah, Russia's up to some shit, then we have to give the counter narrative. We have to talk about how uh, well, uh, America invades stuff. Okay, that's not relevant. <laughs> We're talking about this situation. Like Nazi Germany invades France and then some dude's like, oh, well, how about North Africa, huh? It's like, what? Um, well, there's a lot of German-speaking people in Czechoslovakia and ethnically German people. So, you know, it's like in their sphere of influence. It's the same argument, man. It's the same exact argument. And going back to the propaganda point, all those talking points that I just said, those are all talking points that were propagandized by the Nazis. This is all stuff the Nazis used to garner support for the war. You know, to reclaim the greater fucking yada yada. Right? This is the same thing that Putin's doing. This guy wants to remake the Russian Empire. He's not trying to recreate the USSR. He's trying to recreate a fascist empire predicated by religious tenets. Don't even get me started with the anti-Semitic crap that's flung at the Ukrainian leadership. Like, this is all deliberate, man. This is what a misinformation campaign looks like. This is how propaganda affects us. We get young, impressionable people going around saying stupid fucking shit because some guy told them to say it. Hate's not ingrained in people, right? It, it's taught. So we got to advocate for, for the inverse of that. We got to advocate for telling stories about the good guys, telling stories about the people that are doing the right thing. Because people want us to believe that there are no good things about our nation states, about what we do, about the principles that we stand on. They want us to not have faith in our institutions. You know, I think Ubisoft's vision here, right, of Harry's character, Harry is a scholar of world religions, of history, and he believes he is doing the most ambitious diplomatic project since the Second World War. You gotta, you gotta dig underneath people's minds and hearts and find why they do what they do. And that's how you persuade someone. By making it understood that you understand them. It's not politics, it's just psychology. Is it ethically ambiguous working in the shadows this way? I don't know. Maybe uh, go watch Andor. Everybody should just go watch Andor, right? If you have a problem with this video, go watch Andor. Get all the way to episode 10, I know. A lot to ask of you, but just get to episode 10 and you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Anybody who's watched the show will know what I'm talking about.
So yeah, I know Boba Fett and Obi-Wan were mid. Okay, I promise Andor is really good. It's worth it. Deuces.